Okay, hi everyone. How's it going? Okay, I'm going to share this one. Pilgrim Society. Uh, there's so many societies about. They are all interlinked and working together. The Pilgrim Society, founded on the 16th of July, 1902, by Sir Harry Britton. What a name. K-B-E-C-M-E. Is a British American society established in the words of American diplomat Joseph Schulte to promote goodwill, good fellowship, and everlasting peace between the United States and Great Britain. It's not to be confused with the Pilgrim Society of Plymouth, Massachusetts. And I've heard of them. They're, yeah. Over the years, membership. Over the years, it has boasted an elite membership of politicians, diplomats, businessmen, and writers who have included Harry, Henry Kissinger, Margaret Thatcher, Caspar Weidenberger, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Henry Luce, Lord Carrington, jeez, Alexander Haig, wow, Paul Volcker, okay, Thomas Kern, mm. George Shields, and Walter Cronkite. Hmm. Okay. Among many others, members of the immediate royal family, United States Secretaries of State and United States Ambassadors to the Court of St. James. And customarily admitted ex officio to members of the society. Activities. The society is notable for holding dinners to welcome into the office each successive U.S. Ambassador to the United Kingdom. The patron of the society is the Queen Elizabeth II. Prime Minister Winston Churchill delivered a speech to the Society on May 18, 1941. The fir that might be interesting to read. The first informal meeting of the Pilgrims of Great Britain included General Joseph Wheeler, Colonel, later General, Sir Mo Brian Mann, the Honourable Charles Roll, And Harry Britton. The first meeting of the Pilgrims of the United States was at the Waldorf Osteria Hotel in New York on the 13th of January 1903. Well, that just answers it all, doesn't it? The Pilgrims of Great Britain and the Pilgrims of the United States have re reciprocal membership. Each committee members, as of 2020, are the Marshal of the Royal Air Force of Lord Stirrup, KG, GCB and AFC President, Miss Diane Sinton, Sir Stephen Wright, Mr. Richard Reed, Mr. Abdul Benhay, Sir Peter Bonamy, MP, Mr. Peter Cadbury, Professor Stephen J. Charlecombe, Mr. Piers Coleman, Mr. Paul Diamond, CMC, G, Mr. Tristan Elberg, Mrs. Kelwyn Hattleskog, Mrs. Valerie Humphrey, Mrs. Yelda Pant, Deputy Chief of Mission American Embassy London Cube. Hmm. Just like a cube, isn't it? Sir so David Newbegin, OBE. Sir Brian Nicholson, OGBE. Mr. Mark Sigelman, Air Marshal Sir David Walker, KCVO, OBE. Ms. Zena, Zena Wicket, and Admiral Sir George Mitchell Zambalas. GCB, DSC, ADC, DL, FRAES. Mrs. Amy Thompson is the Executive Secretary, successor to Mrs. Trees Wells. Notable members Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip. Prince Philip is, or well, was, also the uh, 33rd, you know, degree Mason, the Prince. Uh, before he died, he was the head. Prince Charles, Nelson W. Aldrich, Ambassador Winthrop W. Aldrich, so they'd be brothers, Philanthropist Jonas Nicholson Brown, Columbian University President Nicholas Murray Butler, NATO Secretary General Lord Carrington, Ambassador John W. Davies, Vice President Charles G. Dawns, William J. Crow, Senator Chauncey Dupu, CIA Director Alan W. Dules, Secretary of State John Foster Dules, must be brothers there, 
Ambassador James W. Jarrett, General Alexander Haig, Ambassador to the United States Edward Wood, Edward Wood First Earl of Halifax, Ambassador W. Avril Harriman, Ambassador Joseph P. Kennedy, Henry R. Luce, Financer John Pierpoint Morgan Sr. Ultimately became known as J.P. Morgan. Yeah. Odgen Reed. Wow. Whitehall Reed. Odgen Mills Reed. Whitelaw Reed. Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Henry Kissinger, Attorney General Alec Richardson, George C. Marshall, General of the Army, Secretary of Treasury, Ellen W. Mellon, Oil Refinerer, J.D. Rockefeller, Banker, David Rockefeller, the nose on him, jeez, Secretary of State, Enel Root, Banker, Jacob Sheaf, and Theologian, Robin Ward. Mm, very interesting with all of those names. And these people, if you know their deeds, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Wow. The Pilgrims of Great Britain and its sister society, the Pilgrims of the United States, are the two oldest and most pre prestigious Anglo-American organization on both sides of the Atlantic. Over more than a century, the Pilgrims have been played a very important role in cementing good relations between the two countries and have acted as one of the principal custodians of what has become to known as the special relationship. While visits to the place of interest often with the American connection have continued to occupy an important place in the calendar. Periodic receptions at Winfield House as guests of the American ambassador have helped to strengthen unique Anglo-American relationship. Under the presidency of Marshal of the Royal Air Force, Lord Stirrup, and chairmanship of Miss Diane Simpson, the Pilgrims of Great Britain look forward to continuing enthusiasm to challenging future. Field Marshal Earl Roberts, Victoria Cross, 1832 to 1914, first prisoner of the Pilgrims. And look at all this Freemasonry stuff on him. They are Freemason things. And if you know the history between America and USA, you would know that uh, USA is still owned by Britain. It's merely a plantation. Please don't get up me for saying that either. So on the 16th of July 1902, an informal meeting took place at the Carlton Hotel in London, at which the decision was taken to establish the Pilgrims of Great Britain. Those present included General Joseph Wheeler, the famous cavalry leader of the Confederate Army during the American Civil War, Colonel, later General, Sir Brian Marne, who had commanded the troops relieving McFacking in 1900, the honour of Charles Rolls, of Rolls-Royce fame and notable aviation pioneer and Harry, later Sir Harry Britton, the title of the Pilgrims, not to be confused with the Pilgrims Trust, had nothing to do with the Mayflower and the Pilgrims Father of 1620, but was chosen as a short and concise name which would express the idea of members of the English-speaking world travelling from one country to another. The main objective of the Pilgrims was, as is still remains, the encouragement of Anglo-American good fellowship. Hmm. The centennial year of 2002 saw a memorial events, including the reception at St. James Palace in the presence of our patron, Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, at a Thanksgiving dinner at the Mansion House by courtesy of Lord Mayor of London. Her Majesty has allowed the pilgrims to hold receptions at St. James Palace on four occasions. 2002 also saw the publication of the Pilgrims of Great Britain and Centenary History by Anne Baker, an account of the Pilgrims' activities and achievements over ten decades. With some well-chosen photographs and other illustrations, Annie Baker went on to equal her achievement by producing in 2003 the Pilgrims of the United States of Centennial History. Over the years, the roll call of distinguished guest speakers of Pilgrim events has been most impressive. Lord Curson, Mark Twain, and it's that's not his real name, Samuel. 
Emmett's, I think it is, Samuel something is his real name, Admiral Perry, the Prince of Wales, Lady King Edward, Stanley Bourbon, Ramsay MacDonald, George Marshall, Dean Ashton, Anthony Eden, Archbishop Fisher, Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, Henry Kissinger, Caspar Weinenberger, H.R. H, the Princess Royal, and General Lord Dennett, to name a few. The Pilgrim's Archives are lodged. Yeah, that doesn't work. I've tried to click on that. It doesn't get me anywhere. But, um, all of these people are Freemasons, uh, Eastern Stars. That's what they are. Having their little get togethers under a different name. The distinctive Pilgrim's logo was designed by Hugh Fisher, an artist at the Illustrated London News. It shows an ancient mounted pilgrim with a lion representing Great Britain walking beside him, an eagle representing USA, perched upon the steed's rump. Above this, another ancient pilgrim grazes with amazement at a motorcycle car, bicycle, steamship, train, and aeroplane. The motto, Hike et Ubique, translates to here and everywhere. Doing that finger sign, of course. So much in here. Pilgrims of the United States came into being at a meeting of the Waldorf Hotel, Astoria Hotel in New York, on the 13th of January 1903. Pilgrims of Great Britain and the Pilgrims of the United States have reciprocal membership. By tradition, the Pilgrims join together in a single toast. His Her Majesty King, Queen, and the President of the United States. The first, Ameri first speech on British soil by an American, new American ambassador to the United Kingdom is to the Pilgrims of Great Britain. And the first speech by a new British ambassador to the United States is to the Pilgrims of the United States. Founded in 1903, the Pilgrims of the United States, an association of men and women in alliance with the Pilgrims of Great Britain, seeks to foster fellowship between the Americans, British, other English-speaking people in addressing current national and international issues and emphasise on enduring historic, cultural, economic and social bonds. So the Pilgrims of Great Britain annual meetings... Lectures started in 91, but in 94 it was decided to get, dedicate them to the memory of Sir Harry Britton, KBE, 1873-1974, the British journalist and conservative politician who tried to foster closer Anglo-American relationships and principal founder of the Pilgrims for 17 years. Aha, 17. Is that like the Jesuits? Uh, because it takes uh, 17 years to become a fully-fledged Jesuit to work your way right up the ladder. First as honorary secretary and then a chairman, he steered the society through its early life. He resigned the chairmanship in 1918 because of parliamentary duties and became its senior vice president and the only pilgrim emeritus. Following the 1994 annual meeting on the 19th of September at the American Embassy, Robert Hunter, U.S. Ambassador to NATO, delivered the first Sir Harry Britton Memorial Lecture. Subsequent lectures included Dame Stella Remington, former director of the security services, 1996 Sir Christopher Bland, chairman of the BBC, 1997 Sir Robert May, chief government scientific advisor, 2000 Sir Simon Jenkins, 2005 Lord General Lord Durnett, Durnett, chief of the general staff, 2006 the Right Rev Richard Charters, Bishop of London, 2008 Lord O'Donnell Cabinet, Secretary Neil McGregor, Director of the British Museum, 2010, Lord Hurd of Westville, former Foreign Secretary in 2011, Professor Christopher Andrew, Professor of Modern Contemporary History at the University of Cambridge, 2012, Baroness Manor Buller, former Director General of Security Service, was 2013, Sir Harry Britton's Memorial Lecture, Peter Kleiner, President of the UGov, was the 2014 Lecturer and the Right Honourable Sir Malcolm Wright. Kine, Rife Kine was the 2015 lecture. See how he's got his hand? That's a Freemason thing. That's what they do. They put their hand in their jacket like that. Show they're a Freemason. <sighs> they pose for photos like that. Well, it looks like I miss out on joining to find out what's going on. I don't have anyone to propose a membership. <laughs> the Pilgrim Society... The enemy of humanity, he warned us. Douglas Gabriel and Michael McKibben discussed the evil secret society called the Pilgrims Society. Once you see how this organisation is responsible for war, strife, white supremacy around the world, you'll demand that your elected officials shut them down for being... Mm. 
it is a white group everybody's looking for. Yeah, right, not me. We offer proof that they've been terrorizing the world for over 100 years, and we name names. I'm not going to play that. I'll get a copyright strike. There's a plot in this country to enslave every man, woman, and child. Before I leave this awful office, before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose the plot. If you want to find the source of white supremacy, look no further than the domestic foreign group, the Pilgrim Society. This is one of the most dangerous enemy, and they should be named as organization. In all the freedom-loving countries, they fund terror, war, and eternal strife. They own the media and publishing house, spew fake news, revisionist history, and propaganda. They are the enemies of the people. I'll leave links in the description. Excuse me. A study of the American Anglo-American establishment, Rockefeller Mountain, Lewis, Rothschild, Cecil, Windsor, the Federal Reserve, World War II, the CIA, and so much more. Next history lesson for the AOM cats, this one, is that your high school and college teachers probably didn't teach you because they didn't have the textbooks that disclosed the treacherous organization called the Pilgrim Society. You certainly won't find it mentioned in mainstream media because the members of this secret anti-American group own and control the media. They lie to us, they spew propaganda, they run false flag narratives, they distract us with obfuscations and semi-truths. These are their weapons in the information war. The intermarried old line hereditary wealth gouges, British crown lawyers and Wall Street escaplins go back many centuries and have their tentacles on all levels of power. And guess where this crazy little group of traders got started? Q drumroll. Yeah. Once you are educated and enlightened about the next layer of global corruption that stands between and our US Constitution, you can help others take the steps to meet their journey of truth. AOM cats gently nudge people along the path and help them become wiser each day. Our goal is to have around the world shine a bright light on this evil plan of enslaving humanity in a digital one, a one world order trinary. We recommend you save this PDF on your computer so we always have a hard copy in the world for truth seekers. Don't try and grok the subject all at once. It's huge and you might choke on the hairballs you cough up. <laughs> we will take you step by step through the secret org organization that works with the British to keep America under its control. We will show you the evidence that links the senior executive service to the Pilgrim Society. We will show you the evidence that this group is the American Privy Council. We will show you how the Pilgrim Society members control the media or corporations as well as many alternative media challenges. You will see that this is the great information war we are fighting and the one has been trying to show us since the first day he called the media fake news. He said the media has big responsibility to life and safety in the country. Fake news has contributed greatly to the anger and rage that has built up over many years. News coverage has got to be got to start to be fair, balanced and unbiased. Oh these terrible problems will only get worse. Don't despair, there is a solution to taking down this house of sinful, sorrowful cards. Our aim for truth community provided the president with a that will be a lethal blow to the swamp. The weapon comes from Michael McKibben, the leader technologies with their offer to let the president hold the original source code of the internet scalability. This puts our elected man in charge and not unelected globalist pigs like Mark, Peter, Eric, Nick, Jack, Cheryl and the gang. Let's inform Silicon Valley kings, boy kings of the new terms of service, compliments of the Betsy Ross and Tom and Thomas Paine in the ass globalists in service to American people and everywhere. A new sheriff is in town and it's high noon. This patriot is the evil cabal that has been running America secretly for the British Empire to name the enemy of the Republic Pilgrim Society. And guess who this secret army in Washington is? The Senior Executive Service. For over a hundred years the Pilgrim Society memberships have secretly seized the world's resources and levels of power. Moral humani humanity is now just realizing the depths of their depravity and atrocity. We must now 
defund them <laughs> as if that will happen. Confiscate the confiscate the property they stole and jail them. The British Council and its peers have used the interchangeable British and American for over 100 years to subvert American history, seize control of the US banks, corporation, governments, education and media propaganda. They overrun with Privy Council led British peers including Viscounts, Dukes, Barons, Knights and Lords named Robert helped Jimmy Carter organize the Senior Executive Services page 2010 C. A pilgrim named Thomas Warren Charles helped FDR organize the theft of over 50,000 patents held by citizens of the Axis power and occupied lands in the Anglo-American Patent Committee 1940-45 patent theft ring. There are tens of thousands of patents that have been stolen and hidden from humanity. Pilgrims don't dominate activity in the CIA, M16, NSA, FBI, GCHQ, etc. They dominate American media including CBS, PBS, NBC, ABC, CNN, MSNBC, Reuters, AP, New York Times, and BBC and The Economist. Yeah, so Murdoch would have to be part of it as well. They run the Council on Foreign Ref Relations, The Circle, Bilderberg, the Trilateral Commission, Bohemian Grove, NATO, and in the past, the Miller Group, Cecil Rhodes Round Table and Sc Skull and Bones, Ford Foundation, Zionism, Knights of Malta, Aspen Institute, Soros, Hoover Institute, Atlantic Council, etc. They are dominated by a small group of families, including the Rockefeller, Kissinger, Rothschilds, Rhodes, Milliner, Wolseley, self style British and American Acrasty, modelled on Cecil Rhodes' British American Federation dream. The Pilgrims created British Israel Zionism to maintain a British foothold in the Middle East after World War II. The Pilgrims are smothered with Ivy League and Oxbridge self stylus elite prophenticating narcissists. The Pilgrims promote eugenics as a religion. See a full list of self search capability of 2,548 pages of the Society membership list starting from early 20th century to the current time. This is a huge find for the community, so make sure to take the time and save the PDF for your records. We do not want this evil secret society to be secret no more. Thanks to the researchers at AFI, this extensive document has been made so that it's easy to search keywords. Use the control F to search words, names, phrases. In the article below, AIM Patriot Condo explains that the relationship between the Pilgrim Society and the suppression of silver prices and the suppression of much needed technologies as the planet enters a mini ice age. And there's something going on with our planet. It's, it's Something's off. Mother Nature is screaming out to us and we're not listening. We wanted to know about Edward Pooley and his relationship to the society, so we turn to our expert in these matters, AIM Patriot and Concave member of the Condor, who offered this article, Silver Steelers Initiative to Protect Property Rights of American Citizens. How they steal the wealth. Hit the world. Money, power, human history. For those of you sick and tired of the Force feeding fake history in public school, university, and doctorate centers throughout your revisionist history books. You might want to save the history timeline for yourself and your family. We put it in a convenient PDF form so that you can copy offline. So they got their propaganda. 40 white guilt propaganda tactics used by media. And elites to push for third world immigration. Now we know the truth that JFK spoke, let's set it free. Let's usher in a thousand years of peace and prosperity on our planet. Tell everyone you know about this society and their evil plan to take over the world. Tell them about everything you have learned here about the American media. Educate and enlighten those in your circle of influence, be it on Twitter, public billboard, t-shirts, flyers, flyers, public lectures, like the library, social media, anywhere your talents, times and passions take you. Be a truth warrior. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, 32. 
Where education is concerned, people claim straight away to know how to educate. I'd merely say that when one speaks on educational questions at the present day, he finds itself in a particular situation. If all one sees that much needs reforming in education, it is much as to say that one is not satisfi satisfied with one's own education. One implies that one's own education has been exceedingly bad, and yet, as a product of this very bad education, education of the education in which one finds so much critic for otherwise, why be a reformer? One sets up to know the right way to be educated. This is the first thing that involves contradiction. The second one, uh, the second thing is one which gives one a slight feeling of shame in the face of the audience when speaking on education. For one realizes that one speaking on what education ought to be and how it must be different from present day practice. So that it amounts to say, you're all badly educated, and yet one is appealing to those who are badly educated to bring about a better education. One assumes that both the speaker and the audience know very well what good education should be in spite of the fact that they have been exceedingly badly educated. Now, this is a contradiction, but it is one which life itself presents us, and it can be really only be solved by the view of education which is here being described. For one, can be perfectly well known what is the matter with education and what respects it should be improved. Just as one can know that the picture is well painted without possessing the faintest capacity for painting of a picture oneself. You can consider yourself capable of appreciating the merits of a picture by Raphael without thinking yourself capable of painting a Raphael picture. In fact, it would be a good thing today if people would think like this, but they are not content with merely knowing. Where education is concerned, they can claim straight away to know how to educate, as though someone who is no painter could not possibly be a painter should set up to show how badly painted pictures should be painted well so there you go there's that one I hope you like that that has got some really interesting stuff there really interesting so yeah I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers and all my current subscribers I appreciate all of your support and I just want to say this will be the next one I'll share about the patents being taken and a whistleblower Andrew Marshall, director of the DOD Defense of Net Assignment he was a whistleblower his central role in the weaponization of technology and killing machines since 1973 so he was outed, sorry they stole technology yeah, I'll share a bit more of this on the next vi uh, video So. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. Raise your vibrations. Much love. Bye now.